career options after PGMPW. Before we ask Mr. Bhishma Joghani to speak to us, a little brief about why the need for the program and what this program is all about. Sorry, the screen's not moving, just a second. Okay, both men and women have comparable leadership abilities and career aspirations at the start of their career. But as women progress in their career, they face a combination of factors that puts career back in the list of their priorities. Being away from work for a long time wears down on confidence over time. The obstacles in returning to professional career are a combination of long-term societal influence and business landscape. We want to speak more about this and I would want to share this acronym with all of you. The first step is to believe in oneself and make a start with, like I said, the acronym, I can see. In the slides moving forward, we will actually be talking about each of the alphabets. The first one is I, I to integrate your support system. It's important that you work with and through your support system. Get family, friends, spouse together to pull all resources and support. Ask for help, not with guilt, but because you deserve it. The second alphabet is C, which is currency. Education is the gateway to success. Choose a program that can take away the impact of time. The next alphabet is be authentic. It's important that you hold on to your core values. Identify your leadership style and hone it with the help of a right mentor. The next in the acronym is N, N for network. Connect back to your past colleagues, friends and community. Leverage on your contacts. Connections or a network can be useful for individuals in their professional or personal lives. The last of the acronym, which is C. C, being confident and believing in your own self, worth is necessary to achieving your potential. Now we've gone through all the acronym uh, alphabets. And with this, we come to the Postgraduate Management Program for Women, PGMPW. This is a general management program with the option of minor concentration. While I take you through the program information, if you have any questions, you can put it on the chat box or once I'm done with the presentation, digitally raise your hands and we'll answer your queries once Mr. Bhishma Shugani has spoken with you. I will now move forward. So the PGMPW is the 11 month full-time program. This is an accelerated management program for women returning to work. The program inaugurated in 2016. Its first batch came on board in January 2017. Currently, we have a sixth batch on campus. The program has been recognized internationally. In 2017, it was awarded with ACSB Innovations That Inspire Award. In 2019, there was an award given by AMBA, which is the M MBA Innovation Award. Sharing with you information about the PGMPW Founders Governing Board. These are very senior professionals. The Founder Governing Board members and the Advisory Council members are the champions of the program. They guide in curating the academic curriculum, mentoring of participants, and if there is a right fitment, there is a placement opportunity also offered by them. I'm now sharing with you what our current batch 2022 looks like. Uh, as far as education is concerned, we have about 50% participants who come with BE, BTEC degrees. We have 18% of participants who have either done an MBA or some postgraduate diploma before joining this program. 
concentration bifurcation is mentioned below we have 36 percent of participants who have chosen information management 32 percent who've chosen marketing 21 percent who's chosen operations and supply chain management as their concentration and 11 percent who've chosen finance we do offer the option of human resource management as well. However, for the current batch, none of the participants chose HR as their concentration. For the bifurcation about the batch, the current average age of the participants is 34 years. Average work experience is six years. Base location, we have seven participants from Mumbai and 21 from out of Mumbai. I will now be talking about the program curriculum. The program curriculum is largely divided into two semesters. Each semester then further divided into two phases. We begin with phase one, which is web learning. This is going to be an online self-study module. We will start in mid-October and go on till December. So about 2.5 months of online self-study. The benefit of doing this is that it helps all participants to be on the same platform as far as fundamentals of the course, fundamentals of the courses go. Uh, it helps to make transition to classroom easy. It's been a while since you've not been students, right? So this course actually helps you getting back into the study mode. It, like I said, it forms habits of learning and self-study. The courses that you would cover during the online self-study module are spreadsheet modeling, quantitative methods, and financial accounting. I'm now sharing a consolidated list of all the courses that would be offered to you across semester one and two. Like you know, this is a general management course, and hence there is a fair mix of courses in economics, accounts, business policy and strategy, business consulting, decision science, business analytics. You have a whole lot of courses which are classroom learnings and non-classroom learning. In non-classroom learning, we have a course in social immersion. Now, this is a two-day course where you actually get an opportunity to work in an unstructured business environment. It helps you to define problem and work with constrained resources. In 2019, we actually had arranged for an NGO visit 2020 and 2021. Uh, the participants worked on NGO uh, with the NGOs online on projects. I want to now share two important pillars of this program. The first one is industry mentoring. Now, each participant is aligned to a senior industry professional, somebody who's at a CXO level for charting their career path and defining professional journey. Second is coaching. Each student is aligned to a life coach, an ICF certified life coach, and you would have up to five interactions with the life coach during the duration of the program. This is a personal journey. Your conversations with the coach will actually help you in identifying your strengths and areas of improvement. I will quickly share this, but we will have more of this coming when Mr. Chugani speaks with us. We also help with career development. This is a support which is provided to you during the course of the program. The support is provided in by various interventions and the interventions are uh, by profile mapping resume building, personal branding workshops are conducted. There are networking opportunities while we call senior professionals from the industry to interact with participants. There would be mock interviews and one-to-one -one feedbacks given. Um, I am now talking about the placement highlights. As you can see, we've put up our placement report synopsis over here. Our placement records have been impressive. In fact, last two years, that's batch 2020 and batch 2021, we've had 100% placements in spite of it being a COVID time. So the placements, while with the support given, the placements have been truly impressive. So while we spoke about the need for why, why we need to do an upskilling program like PG MPW and what happens once you join. So what's the curriculum of the program? We will now talk about eligibility and the admission process. 
So the eligibility is you need minimum four years of full-time work experience. You need minimum one year of career break to be eligible to apply for the program. You need a bachelor's degree in any discipline from a recognized university. You also need to submit an entrance score. You have an option between CAT, ZAT, GMAT, and NMAT. You can choose any one of these exams. We generally recommend GMAT or NMAT, but we leave it to you. You have time till 31st of December to submit your scores. Now to apply for the program, you need to go to our website and the application form is online. Once you complete the application form, we will invite you for interviews. There are two rounds of interviews. There's group interview and personal interview. Bases your performance on in the interviews. We will invite you for the further and we will share the offer communication. Uh, the fees for the program, the on-campus module, which is where you have uh, attend your complete program or complete 11 months program on campus at Andheri Mumbai, the fees would be 10,95,188. In case you're from out of Mumbai and you would want to opt for the hostel accommodation, which is optional, the, there is an additional fee of 1,45,600. In case you are somebody who is out of Mumbai and cannot come down to Mumbai for the 11 month program because you do not have support for maybe elderly at home or for small children, for, for somebody like you, we now have an option of hybrid or the online module, which means you will, uh, you will go through the entire 11 month program, but online. So you will attend on all classes online. We would have Zoom links created and if the classrooms are uh, high tech and you know you have a high option where you will be able to participate with the participants who are actually in the classroom as well along with the faculty so that's an experience that you can take and that's the hybrid option with a fee of 14 lakh 52 thousand Okay, while a lot of information is given, just some pictures of our campus and of the participants of our current batch and some smiling pictures. These are very uh, deserving, happy pictures where these are participants who have graduated from our program. So information about the program has been shared with you. I would now invite Mr. Bhishma Chogani to speak with all of you regarding the career options after PGMPW. So over to you. Thanks, Mansi. Thank you very much for the introduction. Thank you. So I think what we'll do is we'll uh, split this up into two parts. I'll perhaps speak for about 10, 15 minutes and open it up to Q&A after that. So at, at the start of you know, today, as I was evaluating career options post the career break, you know, we, we, we've been working with the MPW program. I personally have been working for the last three years. And uh, as I was listening to Mansi also talk about all that is needed for for uh, participating in the program in terms of your GMAT score, in terms of filling out the forms, you know, what you need a one year career break, all of that. But what came to mind immediately was that there's one big need and therefore that becomes the crux of the question here very often. Is that we also need to believe. You need to believe that, that there is a career possible after the career break. We've, we've heard so much about, you know, women take a career break and then uh, invariably land up taking perhaps some odd jobs, sometimes related to what they've studied or what they've worked on, sometimes not. Sometimes uh, there are stereotypical uh, examples that go, they, they start small businesses from home, either in, in uh, food preparation or around teaching. So, so there are so many examples that go about that we sometimes lose sight that something is possible beyond a career break. It, it just seems out of sight. Uh, the reason... The reason being, we just see so many examples that are not restarting career in meaningful ways that we stop believing in it. And I think, and I think we should perhaps add number one that yes, it, it is possible. It is possible to look at career beyond career break in just the same way a fresher who takes up a two-year MBA program at the end of that is commanding salaries upwards of 20 lakhs for not having worked at all in the past. So all of you all bring in more experience. So first thing is, 
the career break is there but post career break the mba starts looking at all of you with pretty much a blank slate company start looking at you with pretty much a completely blank slate that you all are coming now, now equipped and educated more than what you were before so for that the number one thing required like i said before is belief the second thing that's required is the want to explore yourself and 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 the whole world out there that we just don't have visibility for this i'm speaking from personal experience uh, i used to often wonder myself after having done my mba 3 years after 3 years of work experience that what more is there to learn really uh, i already know business so much but theek hai kar lete hain but after doing doing a one year program myself once upon a time i realized that i came out a whole different person at the other side of the spectrum it's a whole different career path and a whole different uh, life it, it was life altering for me if one were to put it one of the biggest events that changed my life other than marriage was the was the mba that i did so it it is going to require you to look at yourself differently it is going to require you to uh, believe that yes this is possible and then thereafter career options can be explored because i can talk a lot about all the career options that are there and i'll talk about that right away but before all of that it is possible is just something that i'll start off with this this, this wasn't planned really i just thought of putting it out there as i heard mansi speak so what all options are possible post mba just just like any other mba uh, after the career break the first thing that's required is for us to for us to uh, evaluate what all did we learn in the form of while working on the career break uh, we we took on a project uh, often to you know to bring in new life to the world then that became that led to a new project of growing that life in the world and ensuring that that particular life is healthy uh, taking care of everything from food to cleaning uh, to everything around around the world of that person uh, sometimes we may have taken a break for something else but invariably we've done we've done something we've just not sat idle so that itself is work experience so that's the that's the number one thing we have to look at is what is the work we were doing second of course the mba helps and after that industry has become very open uh, and in today's time particularly so they want there are there are today opportunities and targets set by companies that we need to hire so many so many women who have taken a career break in the past so i think if if nothing else this is the best time you know in if ever in history to be restarting a career post a career break for a woman so so why not why not cash in on it while while it's going and i i i believe that this is only here to stay it is only here to stay so this is the start it is possible um post mba people look at consulting no doubt consulting is is uh, one of the biggest recruiters today not only for this program but for every program out there post mba um it's it's a shift in the industry that we're seeing now what is consulting consulting often is honestly just a whole lot of problems that get thrown uh, or, or or get outsourced for people to look at specifically and solve it's not that people within the company can't do it but they're taking care of so many things already and been looking at it in a certain way that uh, they can't generate the time to necessarily look at problems from a different perspective so they reach out to consulting firms consulting firms then uh, hire from b schools because b school in b schools you will learn to look at different problems across industries and that's what you'll do one for one full year and having practiced it so much consulting firms say they they are the best people to hire as consultants so consulting continues to be one of the biggest recruiters on campus uh across across campuses including the pgm pre program so consulting is the number one option that i would i would imagine the second one there's a lot of adoption of technology just in the last 3 years because of especially driven because of the pandemic that was there uh, technology implementation has become really really important and especially across industries now industry even even the tech industry looks at hiring people who have not worked in technology before and they understand business in today's age it is impossible for anybody here to not have worked on technology the fact that we are today all speaking here on zoom know how to operate our respective devices either phones or laptops and be able to log on to a system uh, navigate through it speak on it and come out of it uh, is a, is is something that is just not possible if you were not a technology person before earlier all these video calls had to be set up by other tech people and users did not know how to operate such systems in today's day and age 
our children are operating these systems they are they've become better at using zoom and uh, ms teams during their school times than we ever were in the past so technology has become by default something that we all know and that's what industry also has realized that for implementing technology sometimes we need people who understand business know what technology can and can't do but how can it be implemented on the business side so technology firms especially for tech consulting that is for consulting on how to implement technology in various areas also look at people post mba other than that then there are a number of roles uh, in finance banking uh, business development uh, sales strategy business development strategy across industries that will come and uh, recruit looking at past experience looking at current passions where people want to go and uh, you know basically support the program to that extent so if i were to summarize what i've just spoken about so far is that uh, in terms of careers number one consulting is is one of the biggest options out there number two uh, consulting on technology specifically or or uh, uh, let us say you know information management that is the second biggest career option growing out there and then there's a whole plethora as well basis past experience that you may bring to the table that's in terms of career options and if i have to summarize the first part yes you definitely would want to change your life uh it's difficult for me to describe it uh, it's only you know participants all participants invariably give feedback that this was one of the most uh, life changing events that they've undertaken um by doing this program at spjmr and i would invite you all if for nothing else just to explore a whole different life possible um you know do look at the program either either this or, or you know but do, just do look at uh, an mba program as you as you proceed ahead so yeah i'll open it out to q and a um if somebody would like to ask or even put it in the chat window that will be useful um and we'll take it from there and while while you know you're thinking about questions what i what i perhaps start off with is perhaps the question that gets asked very frequently um and and perhaps that can serve as a starter for for the q and a here the number one question that keeps coming up is that i have got my undergraduate in mechanical engineering or you know something something entirely different i have been working in uh, in design for oil and gas or you know something something different entirely post mba how will companies look at me if i don't bring that experience to the table especially around technology or around consulting does there's a number one question that gets asked that i don't have any background in the new stuff how will i cope and how will i be able to prove myself possible over there Uh, and especially since i've taken a break on top of it so so that's the number one question that gets asked now that question gets asked not only by participants that question also gets asked by interviewers to candidates that you you don't have a background in that you don't you know you don't have a past experience in that and you've been on a break how will you cope with the new job the reason they ask and the reason participants also ask is because it is not common to do so but with with the mba program it is now the reason for that is this one year we explore so much with with what's happening out there in the mba program so much that uh, we would have looked at at least you know at least two cases per industry at least two and in some you you'll have gone to even 20 cases within that same industry so i'm saying even even the smallest of industries you would have seen at least two cases in terms of how what kind of problems occur over there and how to solve them so on day to day basis if you are looking at so many problems day in and day out the biggest the biggest reason that you have to bring to the table and and the answer to that extent is that we have trained ourselves to find solutions now whatever the problem may be whatever the problem may be we have trained ourselves to find solutions using structure that is what b school brings to the table and imagine if if that's what job was all about for you to be able to solve problems on a daily basis irrespective of necessarily having the background or not if you have the background great uh, if you don't have the background we find somebody with the background and solve that problem so so that's that's the number one question that that gets asked and that's the answer to that that uh, the mba program will train and give practice on how to look at problems and use structures to find solutions to those problems so the ability to break a problem down into smaller sub problems apply structure to get 
uniform answers for those problems and then putting it back up together as a solution for the combined problem. That is the number one skill that you'll be practicing day in and day out in that one year. And that's what B-School is hiring for. There are jobs for that. And that those are the options. Those are the number one reason the options open up post MBA as well. So that was a question that I, I hear from other sides. Anybody else here with any doubts, thoughts, questions, ideas? You can put in the chat if you want. Today, digital marketing. Uh -huh. So, Mansi, can I take your help here? If you can just read out the question as it comes along, and then I'll answer that. So, the question is, today's digital marketing is in demand. What is the scope according to you? Is there any course related to this? Yeah. So, no doubt, digital marketing is in demand. Um, now, what is in demand within digital marketing also is because even digital marketing over the last four or five years has seen a lot of change. The biggest uh, demand that is there is for somebody to come and plug and play start start implementing digital marketing tools and solutions within the company so as a result of which uh, so these teams tend to be smaller in size so rather than or uh, within the marketing team itself so rather than hiring somebody new they generally prefer somebody who's done that work before um, so, so having said that while there are courses for it, you'll start small and then take that forward. The challenge is that because it tends to be a pretty technical aspect and, and one aspect of marketing, uh, we, we normally go for something called, you know, or rather post MBA, companies look for somebody who can do performance marketing. That is trying to understand uh, where is the bang for the buck. So as a result of which, uh, you know, it's it's more around implementation of digital marketing that will be looked at. So if you've, if you've got experience in that space, great. If not, there are segues into it. But the MBA, if, if digital marketing is all you want to look at uh, and, and, not, and, and from an implementation standpoint on either Insta or Facebook, then maybe a smaller course on digital marketing may get you started right away. The MBA tends to be far more uh, exhaustive to that extent will not only cover marketing, will cover why is it required, which areas is it required, for what products, what kind of digital marketing solutions would work, and therefore those are the answers that will get solved over there. So that's on that's on digital marketing. Uh, we have a next question coming from Ravina. She's asking, is PG MPW equivalent to an MBA degree? I think once I'll pass that to you to answer. Sure. Uh, so Ravina, PG MPW is not is not equivalent to an MBA degree. What you get at the end of completing the su program successfully is a certificate for postgraduate management program for women. So it's a certificate that you get and it's not an MBA degree. The next is Vaishnavi. She's asking, what kind of courses do you suggest as a preparation for new roles? something like public speaking that would have an advantage to the course. I would definitely, I'll definitely recommend public speaking whether you take the course or not. Um, by and large, almost every, every work you do today requires you to be able to stand up and talk in front of large groups of people. Be it even at the smallest setting, inside of a meeting of five people, you have to be able to read the room Find out what conversation is on. Be able to, you know, come in at the right moment and speak. But at the same time, listen as well and ensure that the other person feels that he or she has been heard. So these are these are complex ones um, in, in communication skills and public speaking, which are very useful, irrespective of the setting you may be in. So whether for this course or for life in general, I would definitely recommend public speaking as, as a course that one can pick up. And it's something that you don't do as a course and finish and stop it. It's a course for life. Public speaking is an area I continue working on upon myself as well till today and beyond. So it is just it is just a very useful skill to have and own over life. Even at your homes, I mean, in joint families, joint families are a mini public speaking event every moment. So... 
Thank you. I would also want to add here that while you do this particular program, you will actually have a course on management communication. You would be taught uh, differently about verbal communication and written communication. And even for courses where it's not really communication, but you will have so many presentations, opportunity of actually coming down to a stage and presenting your views that in the 11 month period, there is enough of brushing up of uh, communications and public speaking that will happen. So that way it's an advantage that you have while you do the program. Uh, I would now move to the next question. This question is coming from, uh, one second. So there is this question coming from Aditya Bakshi. Um, I have worked as dentist in hospital, uh, a clinic and corporate chains of dental. Um, got a chance to work as branch head dentist in a corporate chain. After a career break, I decided to pursue MBA. Can you put some light on it? Thanks. So this is for you. Yeah. So yeah, if you if you go to see, while uh, uh, you know dentistry would be the primary work you would have done, but by by dint of being a branch head, uh, managing a branch, you're looking at PNL, you're looking at uh, customer. Uh, you know, customer satisfaction. It's like a mini business of its own. So now having done that, like this, there are lots of other such business setups that require branches, that require branch heads, that require people management, that require customer success management. Customer success happens to be a big uh, role, by the way, in the, in the technology sector. So the ability to understand what a customer requires and whether our product is providing that service or not, uh, follow-ups on uh, invoices, on payments, all of that is is the is the entire gamut of business, and you've done that in the past. So, if you ask me, there are a number of industries that could that could you know take up those skills of yours and uh, find you very useful and employable. Uh, so, yeah, those those are those are options very easily possible. And the healthcare space is undergoing a massive transition and transformation. If you decide to go to consulting as well, and and there are consultants going into the healthcare space. Uh, that that's again another one that could that could be of great use. So if you ask me, is technology possible? Yes. Is consulting possible? Yes. Are other industries possible as well? Yes. All three. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have Anjali asking, uh, does the PGMPW program hold the same importance and value that the PGPM program holds? See, one would have to parameterize importance and value. Uh, is it an important program? Yeah. So, you know, I didn't start with my introduction completely. I I head career services for SPJMR and, and there are three programs or three full-time programs that we do, you know, placements for. One of them is PGMPW. And so most recruiters, so, so let me just say from an institute standpoint, we definitely, you know, give it importance and uh, meaning. From a recruiter standpoint, most recruiters coming will look at both programs because there are two one-year programs moving in parallel and their uh, placements start together in October. And most recruiters coming will evaluate candidates from both programs, the PGPM and the PGMPW. They know that there are CVs with career break from the PGMPW program, so CVs go to them uh, separately. Uh, some firms will say, we want to look at only PGMPW people because that's, that's the people that we're working to hire. Some will say that, you know, we, we do not want people who necessarily had a career break for the kind of work that we do. And then that's for them to decide. But those are smaller in number. Uh, I would say there are more firms looking at both programs um, and, and far more by extent. And there are a few programs, few firms will say only one program or only one program. But almost all of the companies will be looking at both programs. So in the recruiter's mind also, there's no difference from the two programs. Not at all boils down to you. More than the program, it all it all boils down to whether you are a fit for that role or prepared to do that role and how have you prepared for the interview for that role. It boils down to that. More often than not, that's a deciding factor whether you know, you're able to crack into one or not. So I hope I was able to answer your question. The next question that we have is from Ravina Jain again. Uh, she's asking the highest CTC was 30 lakh per annum for uh, batch 2022. May I know which branch got the highest, uh, whatever, the remuneration and which company offered this remuneration? 
which branch in the sense uh, which uh, specialization i would imagine yes yeah so you know it's uh, yeah i mean it is so it's not like each year each the branch really speaking now will not will not determine which firm or the even the firm that came to hire did not did not say that we want people only from one branch or the other they took everybody cv uh, and they said we'll run an assessment test and in that assessment test those who cleared the assessment test sat for the interviews and after that uh, sitting for the interviews depending on who cleared it and the person who cleared it had no background whatsoever with what the what that company is from but she she is really a good student uh, she i mean she still a really good student with, with amazing grades but uses her brain amazing i mean uh, she she's done phenomenally well i mean the current class person but the previous class also we had we had an amazing person uh, take on that role uh, but that's the whole point what what level are you prepared to change yourself or work upon yourself to present the best possible version and you know that you worked upon to solve problems and they're all looking for problem solvers net net uh, i can't divulge the name of the company because that's something we don't declare uh, so we will we'll park it but otherwise uh, they are they are sector agnostic they So can we move to the next question? Yeah, now? yeah. Ah, let's okay. Move. So Sorry. the next question comes from Mitali. Mitali is asking, um, I have experience in pharmaceutical research and development. After mm. completing PG MPW program, which kind of role and job opportunity can she expect? Yeah. So it's a fair point. You'll say I've largely done R and D. I've not done sales. I've not done marketing. I've not done any business role per se. I've just gone into pharma R and D. So last year we had somebody who was into paints R and D. So she was doing R and D on paints, chemical composition and lifetime of paint. And uh, so of course she came here with with her uh, dissertation as well. And what work am I going to do after that? She went on to do an internship in a technology company. And uh, if I remember, if I'm remembering correctly, and then thereafter. If I'm not mistaken, she went into a consulting firm for for the final role. So the two, I would say, the two things that she brought about a lot in her interview or during the one year as well, and then expressed that during the conversation with companies as well was that number one, she had worked a lot upon herself in terms of what is different from what she had done in the past, uh, or rather, how she was in the past versus how she is now. But the second most important thing was she was able to translate that even while in R and D. it's not like i don't have to work with people there are stakeholders it's like a mini project even even at least the nature of her business was that each time we release a new product or come out with a new product uh it's it's like a mini project just like in technology when you come out with a new uh, application there's a whole project that goes around it and the same thing happens in uh, paints are indy so if you can demonstrate and I, and i know for a fact having spoken to a few people and friends who are in the pharma industry is it for example every molecule that that has to be uh, you know worked out there are multiple departments that you need to follow up with are they following the timelines by which they're supposed to provide their necessary checks and balances and uh, so even even the r&d industry is project oriented and even though you may not have done it but at least you know how it works you've understood you've worked with it uh, being able to demonstrate that translation is very important so again is is uh, is consulting or technology as a project based uh, role possible yes uh, but again are you if you can show that you've done problem solving and learned how to solve problems in the last one year uh, at the program yes possible and of course industry itself will value the experience you bring in because you'd have gone through r and d processes so there were firms that had um, not necessarily r and d but process oriented firms which said that we would love to know how they manage the process of r and d and innovation and we'd like to bring about that in our companies so those those are all kinds of roles possible post mba uh, i hope i was able to answer your question so next we have veena mishra asking in my case i'm from environment background she's done her msc in environment and worked in the same field that is esg 
since this field is burning promising in promising in today's scenario but during my job search time i found that there is no back to work option for technology especially in it for women will this program help me to get the opportunities yeah technology happens to be if happens to the second largest recruiter the largest being consulting technology or tech and tech consulting happens to the second largest uh but yes one simple answer will the program provide opportunities yes we we've, we've had a you had a stellar run so far touchwood uh and and amazing support from the industry uh, but number two given you've already from the esg sector that itself you were right to go bang on it is it is burning hot and if you've got all that background uh, we would specifically share your profile with some firms with those divisions uh for recruitment and uh, we know those firms would be happy as well because it also helps them uh, complete complete a required uh, mandate that is there globally for them as well in terms of uh, diversity in candidates so yeah in 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 a short answer yes it is it is possible so the next we have is from anjali anjali is asking thus uh, also does the salary hike depend on the last salary drawn from the previous organization or do they come with their own salary brackets normally they come with their own salary brackets uh, if they ask us for the salary details also we don't provide it to them uh, there is a salary non disclosure clause when we work with companies um, and we have had situations where where people have even I and mean, we don't report it that way because it asks too many questions which is not worth answering but if people's last drawn was even even a you know as less than 5 lakhs a year have gone on to pick up more than 15 20 sometimes it's it's possible it's possible so we it and it has uh, it's got less to do with your incoming and more to do with post mba where they see that they can peg you at so they they'll normally value you very differently they will try to see that once you join the organization will if let's say you're joining the organization at a at a senior manager level they don't want to see if they'll do a ballpark check in the minds if i take her as senior manager they'll try to see two three existing managers who are within the organization representative and see that would they're trying to imagine if i hire this person as a senior manager will the existing managers have a problem will she be able to manage those people as well so mm-hmm. people management skills are really important demonstrated in in uh, negotiations when it comes down to uh, seniority so if they want to they want to see your capability on being able to manage other people with the seniority that you bring to the table so so that's going to be the most important thing and not your past salary past salaries have little bearing on uh, future salary right so ravina has one more question to ask she's asking <laughs> are there international placements as well yeah. no so international placements at least last 10 that would say last 12 years have have taken a big hit across b schools what's happened is they're more visa driven now than opportunity driven so if today you want to work in singapore while well, singapore firms would be more than happy to come and recruit the challenge is that even to release an offer in singapore dollars they need to be able to demonstrate two things number one that they couldn't find the person in singapore for that particular role and number two um they need to work out a permanent or or a working pr Or, or you know work visa for you in singapore so singapore gets shut down just because of visa restrictions similarly is true for australia uh, dubai uh, the us canada and so on so at least the advanced countries tend to be a bit of a challenge in terms of international placement then of course africa is very open but nobody generally wants to go to africa for the moment so those we don't pursue too much either but international placements are are not um, are, are not very common at spjmr or across b schools for the matter for international placements if somebody is really keen to relocate to another country i normally recommend people that it is then better to do your education in that country the reason being most of the education institutes then have a tie up with the governments to allow work for one two years before you know the visa status expires and in that much time then you have the option to have a spon- have the company sponsor the visa or the work visa and then you take off from there so that's how i recommend people if you really if going abroad is the biggest important uh, objective from from an mba then better do the mba from the country where you want to go so that 
you can at least start working here as well. You got it, sir. So we're done with the comments. We have Preeti Agarwal. She's raised her hand. She wants to ask a question. Preeti. Hi, Mansi. Thank you so Hi. much. Uh, good you. evening, uh, Bhishma, sir. Sir, I have a unique uh, concern, if I may say. I am on the other side of 50. Uh, and I am still keen to do a program like this. Uh, my concern is how do companies view age as a factor when uh, offering placements? Like, yeah. I know I don't feel 50. I know I don't probably act or look. That's beside the point. But the people who are recruiting, uh, what kind of mindset do they come up with? Yeah. Fair point. Fair point. Um, so I'll answer this in two parts. Number one, you know, doing the program itself and what you get from it, particularly, you know, uh, with the age consideration. Uh, number two, how do companies view it? Both, both very important. Number one, yes, the fact is most people tend to also look at B-School in terms of what you're putting into it in terms of investment, which in addition to the fee is also the time. So let's say, you know, you're spending one year in doing the program as well. So there's a time investment of one year and there is also a fee investment of the fee of the program. Now, what return you get is is beyond education and jobs is also the experience. So education is there, the experience is there of having done the program. And uh, so that in itself is, is really speaking what you get from the one-year program uh, in terms of investment and return that is guaranteed. Now, in terms of careers, it's not only true for B-schools, but also outside of B-schools. Post 50, the biggest thing that companies are looking for is that will this person be able to add value back? What is the mindset right now of this person? Because most people, by the time they're hitting their 50s or, or mid 50s, are essentially looking out to bide their time over the next five, six years to retirement at 60. <laughs> so sir, that's their uh, worry. Their sir, only worry I... is, huh, sure, sure, tell me. Sir, uh, in fact, I would look at it a little differently. At 50, all my responsibilities are over. My kids are into their careers. My husband is doing his work very fine. I don't have any physical or mental uh, issues or concern that I have to worry about. I am actually a free bird who can concentrate a lot on the work on hand and not be affected by what all is going around around me. So I'm actually a better suited candidate if I am able to prove to them that uh, you know, I don't really have any other concerns on in my life right now. Correct. And I would say you're a better suited candidate more because of that tone and attitude you brought to the answer that you just gave. Not because of the not because of the factual information that you gave, but because of the voice, attitude, and tone you bring to the table. And any listener would hire you not for the facts you presented, but for the way you presented those facts that I'm done with all that and I can contribute better right now. And that's all they want to look at. If that's what the status is, no problem. Ajah. So that's what I'm saying. Their, their, their decision around it is often driven by, are you the kind of person who's just looking to bite time? Because that's that unfortunately happens to be the vast majority of people. That, you know, abhi kaam kar liya hai, pachas pe pahunch gaya hai, responsibilities nikal diya hai, tension aur lene nahi hai life mein. Jo project de doge, kar denge, the tough laga to kisi or kosama denge, don't make me run around too much. So, uh, and I'm just passing my time five, six years from now. I don't, I don't want to necessarily earn more money. And therefore, I'm happy to take, uh, in case I have a nice golden parachute VRS system possible, I'll do that as well. So, that unfortunately happens to be where people are sometimes. And it may have to do with the fact that, you know, they've, they've just been working throughout and, and they're not tired of it or something. Or maybe they should have taken a break and they didn't. Uh, but you, on the other hand, want to contribute back. You want to work. You've taken a break and you want to, you want to work. So companies are willing to... Exp so it'll be, it'll be our job. At least the one thing that we can do is arrange for conversations to happen. Arrange for interviews to take place. Hmm. Now, then after that, it's a conversation that you also have to sell and convert. And uh, will a company be willing to look at you that way? Sure, why not? Uh, uh, and if at all, it'll be only for the way you spoke rather than rather than just the factual content of what you said. Because what you said is right, logically, but the way you said it uh, goes to show that you really, really do believe in it as well. I was able to answer the question. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. 
Do we have any more questions? I think we're done with all the comments and anybody else can raise their hand digitally and we'll call out. So I think we're done with the questions, all questions answered. Anybody else before we wind up today's webinar then? Okay, so the PGMPW admissions team will anyways be in touch with you. We've already communicated with you and shared the program brochure, important links, website address, and the information is given. In case you want to reach out to Pooja Javid or myself, Mansi, feel free. Our contact numbers are put up on the website and on the brochure, and we'll resolve your queries or we'll answer your queries, actually. Okay, then I think, uh, Bishma sir, I think we are done. We can close today's webinar now. Thank you so much, sir, for joining in from you. where you are. And thank you everybody else for joining in for today's webinar. I hope this webinar helped you with the information that you were looking for for PGMPW program. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.